what I got going here is we're trying to return a section of the yard back to nature. This way we can examine and study the process by having it right here in our own backyard. We're allowing nature to rebuild how it would appear in its natural state. Here we have a good example of nature returning to itself. You see the grass creating height. If we pre take this process and continue it, we will see in your own backyard how Mother Nature can return and you can study it and live it. What we got here is protein. Compost piles need protein. This is chicken feed. We're going to grind it up using this uh, pellets right here. I put it in the grinder, coffee grinder, put it on fine and grind it. Seriously. The way to the future is right here, to compost every product that comes from plants. The world's soil levels are depleting at an alarming rate, mainly because when the tree that used to exist there is no longer there, the soil decreases because it's no longer being fed. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking uh, that raw Texas soil which happens to have a large amount of clay in it. Clay is good to some extent, but bad in others. When you have a lot of clay, when rain falls, the upper layer of the clay tends to uh, seal and the water just floats across the surface. There's no organic matter. So what I'm doing is I'm adding organic matter. Think of, our, think of organic matter as being a sponge. The rain falls, the sponge absorbs the rain and holds it so that the roots of the tree can utilize it or the roots of the plants. I'm watering it now because it was so dry and I'm trying to build uh, a very healthy environment which will attract earthworms. Anyways, here, this I'm using chicken feed. And what I'm trying to do is make it available to the earthworms so that earthworms can absorb it as soon as it's ready to be absorbed. Um, sometimes earthworms will let bacteria or mold grow upon it and then eat the mold. But anyways, I'm trying to build a soil here that will invite the natural world to return to it, such as earthworms, insects, even ants. I know we all don't like ants, but they're part of the natural world. I get when I'm making this, I don't I don't like to see anything that don't belong in there. So I kick it out. I keep thoroughly mixing, adding water. Suddenly it begins to look like this, like a mud. You see there's already a little organic matter in it, but I plan to add considerably amount more. Every year I collect 100 to 200 bags of leaves. My leave of preference is pecan leaves. Pecan leaves have a, a neutralizing effect on the soil, whereas uh, trees from oak trees have an acidic effect on the soil. Uh, since what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create as healthy as possible a soil for uh, the vegetable plants. Vegetable plants uh, require a neutral pH level. Again, I'm always adding water because uh, dry leaves are very absorbent and uh, it takes them a while to get to the point where they're broken down and maintain that absorption. So by pre-wetting it, I'm going to have it in a very healthy state before I return it to the soil. The idea is to mix all the clay soil in well with organic matter. The organic matter uh, tends to break up the natural tendency of clay to stick together. If organic matter is in between the clay, uh, it can uh, percolate through the soil better when there's leaves. But I use tons of organic matter. 
This here is leftover from crepe night. Uh, what doesn't get eaten, I return to the soil. And nature is not picky at all. They take it all. Anything that is organic returns to organic. I have people and friends that give me their trash, so they feel better if uh, it's returned from the mother, mother Nature. That's where it belongs, with Mother Nature. I hope to do this on a very grand scale. Matter of fact, I'm inviting seven billion of you people to join me in this. I know it shouldn't have let it go to waste, but it did. I know we're all guilty of it. But if you stop and think about it, it's not gone to waste. It's going to feed the earth. That's a good thing. So if it doesn't feed you, then it feeds me through the soil. Thank you. Remember, if it came from the earth, the earth will take it right back. This here particular compost is a little bit older. It has some mold in it. That's mold in there. They see the toilet paper roll? I don't waste nothing. Coffee grind. Don't let it go to waste. Eggshells. When I have the time, it's better to smash up the eggshells. Otherwise, they'll sit there for about 50 years. This is what I've been doing across this whole yard. If I could take you back in time, I'm going to try and find a picture to show you where this was dead soil when I moved in here. I was lucky enough one time to, they were building a new road and they were scraping the topsoil off. So I went and asked them if I could get some of that, that, that uh, soil they were scraping. I said, could I get a few buckets of that? The guy says, sure, sure. So 550 buckets later, hauled in the back of my car, I poured all that soil right behind what you see there. And I've been composting it this way. The coolest thing about composting it this way, you never know what's going to pop up. I got baby pecan trees from seeds that were thrown in there. I got a bag of uh, pecan leaves that I stuck over on one side. And last fall, I happened to look at it. And there's a little pecan tree growing right out of it. Remember, you've got to keep turning this stuff so it's all worked in. Anything that's lumpy, I'll, I'll use the shovel and chop it up. This, this is from one of my old compost piles. I love having uh, different levels of uh, compost and different degrees of decomposition. This has been uh, broken down considerably. So I add some of this to the fresh compost as well. This is, a, this is a different method I use in this pile. But the pile I'm demonstrating in the wheelbarrow right now, that's my most uh, current method of composting because uh, life comes to it right away. The first time I ever did this, I uh, made this uh, primordial soup here. And I went and poured it to the left over here. Well, the next week I came because I thought I was going to turn it so it kind of rotate the soil. The more you rotate it, the faster it breaks down. Well, I came a week later, and I'll be darned if I didn't find at least a thousand worms in there. So, since that point on, I've been doing it like this because... Nature just takes its course. Nature wants to survive. All we gotta do is give it a chance. Unfortunately, with all the tree cuttings we're doing to harvest lumber, we're destroying soil. The soil is actually uh, diminishing. Soil levels in some area are, my, my house, the last house my daughter lived in, the soil level was one half inch thick. Good soil should be anywhere from 12 to 18 inches thick. I know mine is. I don't believe I have anywhere that's less than 14. Google forest levels from 3,000 years ago and compare the size of the forest level 3,000 years ago to now. You'll be in shock if you see what's left.
Our beloved redwood forest is down to 7% of its original size. And if you look right there in that plant area, that's where I started. And uh, look at it now. Tell me that's not healthy. This is a finished batch of compost. This is called comp cold composting. I pour it right here. And I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Remember, I discovered this method by one day I, I started it. The next week I come back. Because I was going to turn the, I was going to turn this so the stuff can break down faster. Well, in that one week's time, I am not kidding. There was a thousand earthworms in it. I raise uh, red wigglers, or the brandling worm, and I used to raise them in captivity, but found that their uh, their growth rate was uh, diminished in captivity. So I set them free, and uh, within just a few months, they were like 10 times larger in size. So, and you're looking at about 16 inches of dirt there. That's how I'm going to keep going down my whole property, creating this natural method of adding topsoil. This can be done by you and me. Let's do it.